Hi, hi Heidi, hi friends, hi Tim, hi Stan, hi Ophelia, Elections and everybody. Um, whew, okay, I just need a moment to sort of calibrate. Um, yeah, just, if I can begin with, like, you know, um, just a warning that people may be triggered by what I have to share. Um, so, bro, you might you might as well just kick me out now because I'm gonna be shady. Oh, please don't it. speak. Oh, please don't speak over me. Like, if you want to speak, I'll be quiet. But please don't speak over me. I find that really rude. Okay, I've listened to you for quite a bit, so I would appreciate the same courtesy. Thanks. Um. So, Heidi, thank you so much, and I've been trying to freaking tiptoe and pray that I get here, because if I planned it too much, there would be interference, and, like, I wanted to speak, and stuff was glitching out on me. Um, these assholes have been bugging me my entire fucking life, and, um... I've never actually spoken about it with people before because how it's it just wasn't realistic and practical and the smartest thing I could have done is just bunker the fuck down and study and work on myself. Um, so I was wondering a few things, um, particularly regarding children because I've pieced it together myself that this motherfucker definitely has a taste for children. Um, so I was wondering about if you have any experience with non-verbal children expressing this, particularly like autistic children, because there is an overlap with giftedness and being on the spectrum, particularly when experiencing trauma. So somebody can be gifted and they would have been fine if they had received the support. But with the trauma, that sort of sets things in a different trajectory. And I was also wondering if there is some sort of link between experiencing these beings and people, specifically children, having difficult family lives and or early childhood experiences, a lack of support, etc. Um, as well as if the, the cherubim, um, the angelic being that you interacted with, perhaps imparted any information regarding how they find us and how they track us, because they definitely do track us and I was wondering from like early childhood for example so it's not like oh we're planning to go out and effect all this change or whatnot so it does seem to be through lives as well as that um sorry I'm being distracted by the fucking hand um okay yeah I'll leave it there for now I guess thanks Janelle, you can take your time, all right? Uh, so if you want to follow up after that, um, we'll, we'll give you another chance. And if it's Mr. Thing's uh, epileptic sorry, digital sorry. hand, you can just scroll the bubble down so that he shows up below the screen. That way, you, you know what I mean? Oh, just take, cool. take the phone and scroll cool. it down and then you can't see Not it. Not now. Yeah. And Mr. Thing, I have the mute button. Oh, my God. Doomer Daddy's, oh. Doomer Daddy's willing to use it, all right? Thanks for the, the questions. Um, you're asking if, uh, uh, well, you were mentioning how these things definitely are attracted to children, and that is 100%. Uh, I think that, well, the pattern shows that Hatman in particular likes to, quote, groom children to get used to his presence much like a pervert would. And uh, they get so used to that, they, they don't feel a threat. And then he gets closer and closer. And, and this is actually one of the problems that 
uh, some people are having like, well, I didn't feel threatened by it. So it must be good. He's, he's there like a guardian angel. He's my protector. Um, I've had um, people who were children that were abused and hat men will trip their dad down the stairs who abused them, uh, punch them. And I love they took- how you call him hat man. Mr. Thing, oh, oh. Do, do me a favor and, and, and try to remain silent while Heidi's talking, right? Thank you. Yeah, they take, it, it, this thing takes joy in doing something like that. It's like, he's defending me, so obviously he's good. And it's like, oh, so he did something you appreciated, now you owe him. Um, so he looks to please you, to gain your trust, and, and much like a, a, a groomer, a perverted groomer, he will eventually uh, take advantage of you in all manners of the words um, taken of, of advantage of uh, abuse of um, raping men, women, children, doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, this is, a, a, and, and building upon that throughout a lifetime. So it, you know, it's amazing to me, like with Fringe here, uh, as, who's had a lot of experiences. And when I hear that, I think, wow, amazing that this is, it's strange, it's strange to say, but when they would come at a person, I want to know who that person is and what they're supposed to end up being and who they're supposed to be influencing because the more attention that's being put on a person, the more influential they are in their future and they want to control that. So I would take it as a compliment for myself. Like, man, I was being attacked ruthlessly. And I was like, my God, what is this? So when I I hear of that, I'm like, they see your potential and as horrific as it can be, it's, it's to really uh, control the future that you could have. So I always am, am super impressed and want to get to know the person that's being bothered so much because I'm like, wow, what what are they so fearful of? They sent everything, a whole army, to take down one little person? That person is powerful. That's what I say, and that's what I think, and I'm pretty certain that's the truth of it. Um, how they find individuals, you'll find this interesting. This is something I don't get to talk about much. Uh, I, I have a, uh, a graphic that uh, Samantha made, and, and I just don't have it here right now. I need to scan it and put it in a book or something or put it online. Uh, because I wondered, too. I'm like, man, what, how are they finding me everywhere I'm going? Like, shadow people move with you. That's the difference between ghosts and these things. You go, they go. Um hat man same thing doesn't matter go to a hotel they'll show up anywhere that you're at aliens of course can do the same thing well because they're related they're one and the same on the same team uh so they borrow each other's technology methods whatever it is um but um so they are able to find us easily with uh how can i describe above our heads this is what what alien uh, the alien calf uh described Above our heads is a funnel, you know, that tunnel that we go down when we are crossing over. Everybody's like, it looks like a tunnel. Uh, It was shown to Samantha when she was speaking with Kath and and whatnot, um, this this tunnel that goes from the tops of our heads straight into the sky, essentially like this straight tunnel to the source from whence we came, you know? And the really bright ones stand out more. So all they have to do is cruise over, see the brightest lights. And it, it's kind of like a, an, an, an elevator down. They just have to step into it and they're in your space. They create this blockage so you have less access to the source and just crowd it in. So they find us in a crowd because we literally emanate this brighter light and this brighter funnel tunnel of above our heads. So um, I hope that answered your questions. If you have any others, feel free. Yeah, it did. Turn hard. Do you have any any others? Yeah, it did. Thanks. Um, sorry. Um, I was just wondering if the name Yeshua has any effect because um. When I engage with 
that figure that incarnated here. I experience him as Yeshua, and I don't worship external um, beings. I have received benevolent assistance, which is um, how I'm still here because it's been lifelong fuckery messing with me. Um, so yeah, I was just wondering if, because all this data and stuff is coming out on um, calling upon the name of Jesus, so I was wondering what effect does the name Yeshua have? Oh, you must have missed uh, the beginning of our conversation because the alien beings literally said the the first thing of a de of defense is to say Jesus' name. And aliens, shadow people, demonic things, anything that's of the dark source will especially react to that name and back up. Um, of course, the good guys recognize and know that name too, but that source, that element, that part of God is recognized throughout the universe and uh, is a force to be reckoned with and is who stands in front of you in the face of their warrior from their dark side. And, uh, you know, so I, it's, that's powerful. I, I looked at your profile and see that you're a gifted person. So I'm not surprised that this is uh, your target. They want to block you, but you know what? It goes to show, look at all the effort put in to try to control little you. That's a whole lot. I know it's terrifying. I know it's horrific. I know it sucks, but my goodness, you're a powerhouse. Take the compliment and rise knowing that. Use that name, Jesus, Yeshua. He comes every time. Otherwise, I would not be sitting here speaking to you. And I, I really appreciate you being here, too. Thank you. Yeah, I was wondering, um, more from a technical point of view, with the synonym of Yeshua um, and that sort of um, aspect. And... Let's say, for example, if a child is mute, they wouldn't be able to say the name Jesus, but the thought would be imbued with that. And then, on the other hand, I'm also aware of times when it doesn't work. So, there is also that aspect. Um, I think there's a lot of nuance and that it isn't always the same beings and that the fuckery is just done in a manner to cause all this confusion um, and so having as much info as we can on what does and doesn't work because being aware of the limitations of external things also helps us anchor into our own power and I found that claiming our claiming my reality and the quanta of it can sort of push them out. It's almost like um, the ether animates to be like <laughs> to sort of pushing things out and it's a co-creation. Uh, you spoke of um, those who are autistic and people who are gifted differently in communicating. There are a couple of books out, and I, again, I'm terrible with titles and, and whatnot, but uh, it, speaking to that beautiful power of those who are um, diverse in the way that they express themselves and interpret the world, um, who once given a, an iPad to type out their feelings or emotions, speak of talking to God directly and, and seeing and experiencing and understanding things absolutely beautifully. And so clearly they're not, um, they're able to focus and hone in on it. So I, I think that's a, uh, definitely a, a gift. I think they're uh, an evolution of a sort that they communicate and interpret differently as the, the way that they do. Um, and you spoke of, uh, there's something that I, t I speak to in regards to uh, the human potential and how these things really, they have, a, they have a hard job to take us down. And, you know, throwing the name of Jesus, first line of defense, 
but they're having to paralyze us. It, never doubt our human potential either, because that's that's a it's a it's a powerful force. Uh, and I think that um, you know, not doubting how powerful we are is is part of it as well, and and backing away from fear and um, and all of that as well. Um, the name of Jesus not working, I, I've heard of that as well. And I found in a lot of the cases, um, <laughs> people who write me these long emails, it's like a book. So I said Buddha, I said Muhammad, I said this, I said Allah, and then I said Jesus. It's like, and, and none of them worked. I'm like, oh, hold on. <laughs> it's, you sure are using a whole lot of language. You know, it's like, perhaps you have a little doubt mixed in there. I don't know. <laughs> um, so I think sometimes that uh, we don't realize how we have our, our doubts. I mean, I get it. I absolutely get it. And it takes practice. And this is one of the reasons why I've done some of the work that I have. Like, I, I'm a cartoonist. I'm an author. I'm a therapist, right? And all of my abilities I have encompassed this topic with because I get emails from people who are just like, Hey, I just saw the devil. I don't get into that religious thing or anything, but what do I do? I'm like, well, throw a shoe at it. I mean, it, you're saying, you're saying you don't believe in God, but you just gave a religious title, uh, to this, this thing. I mean, a devil, you know, that's a, or a demon that's, that's biblical stuff, but you don't believe in the opposite side. You, we've got to learn to not be so hard on ourselves and having to be perfect, in our faith. So I, I, I wrote a book for kids initially. I only heard from adults, uh, kind of like in the diary of a wimpy kid type of format, uh, called the other F word. Um, it, <laughs> try to teach people uh, and children first to it, learn why we need faith. You know, yes, I'm Christian. I put it in a Christian angle. Um, uh, so the fickle finders investigates the other F word. And then I did an adult version because I heard from so many adults, uh, uh, the other F word, how to find faith and laugh at yourself while trying. Because we have some ridiculous attempts uh, that just leave me in stitches sometimes. And I get it. We want to figure this thing out that's pulling us. Uh, we know there's a home and we're supposed to be with us somehow. And we are dancing all over it. And, and so I, I, I created all these things like, so you got demons here. Let's to see to build up your faith because you're questioning that. I get it. You know, let's laugh at some car cartoons and comics and figure out your path on it. Um, you know, for kids, for adults, for, you know, um, then I, I had an angelic encounter that taught me a different way of praying. I was bored in my prayers. I'd fall asleep in the middle of them. I'm like, well, now I've got a book called picture prayers. Because how do we connect there? You know, how do we, you know, how, how do we have a you know, strong enough knees to get off a couch, you know, by practicing, uh, of course, every day, not having a lift chair to get you up, you know, because you'll, you'll lose your ability to stand. This is the therapist in me. I'm an occupational therapist. So, <laughs> but it's like, we have to exercise these muscles, get comfortable with ourselves, get comfortable with our connections. Um with God, with Jesus, because, you know, trying to fumble around and find their phone number at the last second could be a little hard. Uh, you know, we don't remember these numbers anymore, so we got to do it by heart, right? So, um, you know, there, we've, we've just got to. So I try to really encompass every angle that I can to help people get to the edge of understanding the reality that we're in and the threat that we're up against. And, and I'm sorry, I hope I answered your questions uh, in there. Um, Heidi, I'm going to jump in. Janara, I um, just followed you back. I'm going to send you a specific prayer um, that I hope will help you. But I do want to address this idea that sometimes uh, Jesus' name does not work. And it, I'm one of those people, I've talked to many people, um, it works more often than not from the people that I've come into contact with, but sometimes it doesn't work. And so why would those reasons be? Uh, number one, our government has this um, very same technology. They paralyze us, suck us out of our bodies, and take us to uh, the netherworld. So know that um, technology doesn't care 
technology is not spiritual. Now, does that mean that God can't create a miracle at any in the face of technology? Absolutely not. But just generally speaking, technology is different than dealing with a spiritual being. Um, so I do want to throw that out there. And then, Janara, I'm going to... I had a number two. Don't ask me where it went. It just flew out of my brain. But, Janara, I am going to send you a specific prayer, and I hope it helps you. And then, uh, I don't know... Uh, who was next, Elric? I think we're, we're Christopher Ophelia picks. Is that right? Ophelia, because I, I have something so pertinent. Um, yeah, and, and I, I just wanted to say, for me, a huge takeaway is, is what you said, Heidi, that... The amount of resistance you get from the universe, the amount of people banding together, resisting against you, is an indication of how powerful you are. Um, I think that's that's incredibly important uh, for people to realize. If you're being beaten up left and right, it's an indication of of how much needs to come against you in order for the other side to have a fighting chance. Uh, Fringe, it, it looks like you you you're wanting to to say something. Yeah, it flew back into my brain. Um, it can. This can be a process, Janara. Um, and that's just one thing I learned a couple weeks ago because I used to think, oh, this doesn't work or that doesn't work. And, um, you know, people, people can battle this for a long time. And it can be a process. And just like what Ulrich was saying, if you have a lot of, um, if you have an army against you, you know, it, it might be a tough fight for the part that you have to put in because, you know, we just talked about things like shadow work and not giving permission and all the many uh, tricks that they pull. And these are things that, you know, if you've got a lot of dark forces against you, it's something that you have to think about kind of all day, every day, and just make sure you have all that stuff locked down. So I'll send that to you. And then uh, Ulrich, who was next? Um, thanks. Um, oh, just okay. quickly, if I can follow up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks. So, yeah, I have been in the process and been figuring things out and like Tom, James, Bernhard and Laura etc have been like guardian angels to me without them knowing it. Um, so I'm really interested in it from a strategic point of view in nipping it in the bud for other children especially because I'm highly empathic and I'm able to sort of pick it up in the field and I don't want others to have to go through this process and the trauma and torture because they, they do employ absolute torture. Um, for sure. You know, I want to just say something um, also really quick, too. The, these beings have studied you for a lifetime to find your triggers, to find your weaknesses. And it, it's, it's um, I know we, we're habitual animals, you know, where it's like we see, we feel something, we react a certain way. And they, they know, like, oh, there's that button to hold them down. There's this, there's that, and, and it and it creates a uh, it creates this this ongoing scenario of being victimized by these things, and, and and I've had so many people that you know I'm a pastor of a church, I'm being attacked, you know I'm I'm this, I'm that, and and I have saying in Jesus' name, get out, and how are they doing this? It's like, well, if they've been with you since you were in a crib, they know the best way to access you, and. How do they learn you from the inside out? They enter your dream state. They they come around during this time or or prior lifetime, and you know, and and where is that agreement at? Where was it? It's like so hard to find and figure out. And um, I'm a big believer that you don't necessarily have to find where the agreement was, but sometimes it's so deep. Um, it could definitely be helpful uh, to to get to the bottom of that. So I don't like uh, to put that ah you question your faith that's why it's not happening but i like what fringe is saying that you know technologies it, it, it can be a lot more difficult to conquer that because that's a concrete thing and if it's our own people doing it i have been victim to that in my face wide awake several times and uh yeah i couldn't break free from that you know and, and i'm like <laughs> they were telling me in their military uh, camouflage walking around with a rifle saying don't worry you'll forget all about this it'll seem like a dream and i said nope because i'm gonna remember you you and you i'm not gonna forget this and boy oh boy did i give them some troubles but 
um, absolutely real and got confirmation about it from my dad. That's a whole other story. And um, Real quick, I just wanted to jump in and say um, thank you, Heidi, so much for your time. And also the Doom Room in general. You guys, uh, it's cathartic talking with you guys. I learn new things. I also get diffused by the people who are like, it's not, you know, I feel what you feel, but it's been, you know, the things that get said to diffuse a doomer. Um, but I, I value everybody, and I don't think there are select chosen ones. I think we're all living and we're all chosen, uh, and uh, we are our humanity, so we're humankind. Um, but good night, everybody. I do have to get put my baby to bed. So thank Thanks you. Thanks so much, too. Um, yeah, we're going to get to Christopher. I just wanted to let you know, Janara, that everybody in this in this room, when they heard you drop those F-bombs, and, and especially when you said those motherfuckers have been after me, I wanted that as a ringtone. I would have. I was screaming at you, take my money now, and uh, people are going to be able to clip it. It's going to do some work, but many people are, for certain individuals, they're changing that as their text notification, right? When, when they really want to avoid a text. Um, so I just want you to know that that created a huge cathartic release uh, for me and I'm sure many other people, Janara. And it's, it's, it's beautiful hearing you have more and more of a voice every time you speak. Uh, Christopher, you've been so patient. Thank you so much. The room is Actually, yours. I, I think uh, Ophelia was before me. I yeah, thank her. you. The reason why I'm sounding frustrated is because I was going to say exactly what Jin Hara was um, saying, and my angels were like, dude, Christopher, get this out. You, okay? I'm not hearing anything. Maybe my phone is it's broken. Can you guys hear me? Ophelia's trying to speak. I don't think you're hearing Ophelia. I, I was going to defer to her. She had her hand up first. Uh, can, can anybody else hear Christopher? Yeah, Ulrich, you're going to you're gonna have to drop, because oh. um, I can hear Ophelia it too. Traveled. So, oh. oh. Ophelia left, so I can hear you and Ophelia, but let's see what happens. Maybe you're fine. Christopher, could you hear Ulrich? I can hear everybody. <laughs> Great. Okay, we have, we have uh, Ophelia back up, so let's see what happens. All right. I don't know if I could hear Christopher. Can you say something, Christopher? Can you guys hear me now? I've been going through so many hindrances right now. Can you hear me? I can hear you, uh, Ophelia. Yes. Okay, I call them satanic hindrances because um, they're real. Um, so anyways, the reason why I was so intent on speaking right after Janhara is because um, my angels told me, tell them about the evil and tell them what you've seen. And I don't like telling people this, but since we're the doom room, Janhara, um, you are, uh, you know, so one unfortunate night when I was driving home, I saw a child um, who had died in a wreck who had been ejected from a car in the middle of a street and they were putting a uh, blanket over her body. And later that night, I went to sleep, and I went into the astral. Um, <clears throat> there was a house made of stone, like a church, and these children like zombies in a line were being led from the house made of stone to an unfinished house of hardy plank wood. And I tried to stop them from going in the house and up these stairs that were in the house. And I could not stop them. I became so scared at what was around the corner. At the third floor. Three. That I turned around. But when I tried to turn around. The doorways I had just used in the stairwell were boarded up. To be able to escape I'd have to let more children in. Who were trying to come up the stairs. And it was just evil. The way it made me choose that. So I went out of the unfinished house, and there was a tree. And the little girl who I'd seen dead in the street told me, You will have to endure the blood. So I laid down by a river on three steps, by all these adults laying down on the steps. And this entity flew through the air, laughing. And it went to adults laying on the steps and it said their name. It would say, Fred, I want you to meet Molly. And with its teeth and blood spewing from its mouth, it spewed the blood of the child onto the adult. And the blood ran into a river so dark and so deep. Second, 
I've been to hell, and I've seen the tower that the demon that was set for me from before my birth here on earth, and they had a table with books they were studying for me. And I had a light that flowed through my body, through my head, every time I tried to walk. There were five flames that were the only source of light in this hell. And all the demons could see my light every time I tried to move to get towards this tower and figure out what this demon's plan was. I met an angel there. They cleared me of some things. But this light that flows through you does make you a lighthouse for these negative shadows. But the most harrowing thing about this hell was there was a deep, dark pit that the demons were guarding from above. And all I heard were children screaming and women screaming. Okay? This is no fucking joke. And anybody who wants to sit here and say, I want to channel demons. I want to go to negative stuff. You are going to go to hell. It's not going to be fun. If you want to channel negative shadow entities, it's like scary. I'm just saying, you're going to be in a hell. I know, Heidi, you put your thumb down, but you're telling me that Jesus it came to you many times saying that this is a real war. And so I don't understand the, the finger down. Because this is where people are going to end up, is this very scary place where they're having to replay very oh, scary no. things. I I was agreeing with oh, thank you. god <laughs> i was like is, is she my home girl or not yeah no i was agreeing with you yeah yeah people channeling these things it's bad down, thumbs down <laughs> and this is why i don't like talking about it because it's so intense for me even just talking about it brings it around but i want people to understand that and i see you down there henry one's working through you right now have fun buddy i want people to understand what is going on that it's a true war it's over our souls and that there is a very dark bad bad place that we don't deserve to go to none of us do and i don't the only reason why it wants us is because we are so much better than it um and all of us all of us that's that's the thing i have to stress is like you know um there's experiencers who are, are like, I've had these these things, and you may not have seen these things, and that's part of, you know what? Maybe you haven't seen them because you're more important, because something's trying to keep you from seeing them, trying to keep you in the deception that nothing is there. Heidi said something my mother said to me days ago, and this was such a synchronicity that was so beautiful. My mother said the greatest deception the devil ever gave us was the idea he doesn't exist. That he isn't here. That there's nothing negative or bad or evil. So I'm going to land my plane. But I'm a love and light person. I just channeled some darkness for you guys. to Because I don't want you to ever have to go there. Because uh, it's real. And I love you guys. Um, but it's real. And Jinhara, girl, you're my homegirl. Please follow me back. I follow you. Um, you're my homegirl. I love you. Uh, thanks, uh, Ophelia. And uh, I love that Larry comes up right when you start talking about the darkest stuff uh it's it's appropriate and uh larry which i was heard was love and light <laughs> so so <laughs> i'm welcome sorry to the room. no don't 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 be sorry no this no, is I exactly what i love everybody who wants to speak please keep your hand up christopher we're going to go to you um and uh yeah go, go ahead christopher and thanks for being so patient man. okay thanks guys um I'm glad I let Ophelia go first, although that's uh -oh, kind of tough I think to the follow. Going around. I'm going to reset uh -huh. myself. All right, French. Um, can everyone else hear me? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks, guys. So, um, back to some questions for Heidi. Um, one, uh, you mentioned that everybody that's sort of at the forefront of uh disclosure movement or studying the topic i wasn't quite sure um but anyone uh, the important people that know uh you you sort of suggested they all know what this uh phenomenon really is and that it's the spiritual thing um 
And I wondered if you could share how you uh, came to that conclusion, um, how, how you know that they know and that, that it's kind of not what they're letting on about. Uh, and if you can elaborate on that a little further. And um, then I have a, di a different question entirely. Sure. Um, without uh, uh, naming names, it's not, I, there's, there's, you know, I've been in this for a long time and now being at the level with the uh, coast to coast and having connected with a lot of people, um, I've sat in a lot of uh, conversations uh, that I'm surprised they, you know, they, they say certain things in private, of course, and, and don't give you the whole picture when they step out in front of an audience, you know, and I'm like, I, I, I don't understand. I don't understand that. It's like, because, um, if you're really in it to stand and, and help people get to under to grasp the whole concept of what we're dealing with, why wouldn't you share it all? Why is their message controlled? Um, and, then I sat in some rooms with some of those people that, oh, <laughs> I see you're on a government payroll. Um, that's messed up. I think it's messed up. And um, so it, I find it frustrating um, to, to have witnessed some of the things and, and knowledge that some of these people have. And, and wow, so, many, so much applause uh, given to them for their hard work. And they're holding the real gem behind, and uh, yeah, they'll never bring it forward because they're on payroll, and I, I think that's not okay. And it's not my place to expose them either because it's hearsay, you know. <laughs> but it's it's like wow. Um, I think it makes the difference between those who are mere researchers and then might experience something later or had a little experience here or there. Um, I, I just, um, you know, those of us that started from the ground up with questions of our own because we were slathered in it uh, of phenomena, you know, that we're just like, let it jump out of our mouths as soon as we learn it. Here you go, everybody, you know, like, wow, let's, we're all in this together while the, these, these folks that are at uh, these more pristine positions, I'm your researcher. I've got this. Because look at all the paperwork behind my name. And they're not being honest. So I think that's really sad. Um, but uh, I, I hope that um, we can still dance around the fire and get to the, the, the people the way that the message needs to be reached where their uh, holding back won't matter. And that's my ultimate goal. Thanks. I've kind of suspected the same thing, um, that, that they know it's spiritual and they know it's sort of <laughs> a pandemonium of the gods and all the old <laughs> kind of stuff that the world knew up until the enlightenment, you know, um, and uh, that that would maybe be the most shocking thing is disclosing to what's essentially become a materialist world that it's <laughs> sort of a spiritual free for all. Um, uh, but uh, oh shoot, um, I I guess uh, a sort of follow up um, is is the real big secret that everyone is afraid to get to uh, something to do with reality itself being unstable or, you know, the physical universe isn't really physical, reality is shifting or we're creating it or, you know, uh, I'm, I'm a uh, hugely Mandela effect experiencer, which is probably the thing that I experience most. My reality has shifted. I don't recognize major events in history have changed. All sorts of things have changed. But you know anything about that? Uh, I'm just wondering, you know, if, if the thing that <laughs> the big reveal that people hint at and stuff, I feel like it's always right around the corner. The UFO thing leads you to discover that, uh, you know, perceptions can be altered and, you know, our, our minds can be hacked. And um, uh, there's, there's a level of absurdity to a lot of encounters that 
the point seems to be drawing your attention to reality just isn't what you think. Um, so, uh, you know, is, is that part of the, the big secret too, is that <laughs> this physical universe is not, we're not living in a, <laughs> you know, materialist universe. <laughs> well, it, it's, it's interesting to me that, uh, uh, David Grush was just nonchalantly says the word interdimensional and, and like he was comfortable enough saying that because he had found enough proof of it. And, and it's like, well, you know, what is that? What is that? Why is, why are we not pondering what he said? I mean, they had those, uh, closed door, uh, sessions and people piled out and said, uh, I forget the representative that said, remember his words. He said interdimensional. He did not say extraterrestrial. I'm like, Oh, like that's, that's much better. I mean, come on now. Um, so they are absolutely aware, uh, that we are living in a multiverse to say the least. And, and I have experienced something similar where I, I, I was not part of this place anymore. Um, and I don't think uh, sometimes I, I really have to wonder if I'm back in the right timeline of, of things. Cause my memory feels very, um, disconnected and people will tell me something. Don't you remember the conversation of this, this and that? I'm like, what? It's like another person. I'm like, wow. Like what is going on here? You know? And, but I can remember the point of it dividing and why, you know? Um, so I, I think, uh, I think they're more than, than aware of, uh, the, the, the dimensions, and if you've heard of the, was it 20 Years and Back program, where people have been uh, essentially taken from this time, you know, join the military or whatever, and, and, and they volunteer to go to the moon or go to Mars or whatever it is, and, and uh, they said, you'll go do 20 years out there, and then you'll be reversed back to your age as if you never left, you know. Um, and they'll go and fight a battle with other beings. And, and uh, they call them super soldiers. So it's, it, and uh, I heard of a story where in order to be transported to be on these different ships, they were put in a room, strapped down, and super high pressure was put put in that room to essentially squeeze them into this other dimension. And it was uh, not a pleasant experience from what I heard, but, uh, but it's like, is, is this, is this real? Um, I've heard it from someone who's never gone public that I know very well <laughs> that uh, it, this is a real thing. So yeah, they're, they're, they're aware. And, uh, their ability to, to access it, they're absolutely doing that. Um, our government are, are doing that. So um, to, to, to predict my family's involvement in, in certain things and put it in a television series, I got confirmation about that. You know, like, how? How? That's so specific. So it's, it's, it's been a complicated world. <laughs> Uh, boy, I don't know if you even understand how how uh, relevant your twenty and back comments are in this space in this particular time right now. <laughs> um, but uh, that is totally wild that they somehow had your knew your future to put it in the show. That's totally wild. Um, I want to ask just one other thing, and this is a radical shift of topic, kind of, but it does get into this just whole I don't know strangeness of reality and non-physicality and that is you are the first person i've ever met and probably the only one i ever will that has an experience of bilocation and that's amazing um i'm an orthodox christian uh those stories absolutely are told among the lives of the saints um i've, I've heard it from uh some recent you know 20th century elders saints on mount athos which is an all monastic peninsula in greece um and, um, you know, he was someone that would be deep in prayer and someone somewhere around the world would see him, his body, you know, 
and they'd interact and he would do some sort of significant uh, life impacting, you know, like save their life or deliver some really important message. Um, meanwhile, he was just in his cell praying the Jesus prayer. Um, and people actually asked him about, oh, what was that like? You know, what is it? And um, he said, oh, it's nothing. You know, God just borrows my my image and, uh, you know, I sort of he's trying to laugh it off like no big deal. Um, and I was just wondering if you could what? say a little Jesus bit more about what that experience. No. What that experience is like, no. um, uh, you know, you, it sounds like you've experienced some kind of similar thing. Was it, was it, was it like you were in a dream? Was it, were you conscious of being somewhere else doing something else, you know, in your body when that happened? I'm just really curious because it's probably the only chance I'll ever have to ask someone that had a real experience of bilocating. So thank you. And, yeah. and with that, I'll pass. No, I, I, I appreciate that question because it's, it was a uh, um, eye opening for me to get confirmation after asking for a couple of decades. What is this? Why, how are people finding me? And this is not the last time you could ask me questions. You can reach out to me anytime. Um, so I'll tell you some of the experiences. And and I knew that I was doing this because I I would have coworkers. I had friends even saying, "You showed me an alien being, Heidi." And how to control it so it wouldn't cause me harm. Like, what was that? And, you know, so those are people I know. I'm like, oh, I did. That sounds like something I do. But, you know, it's just strange things like that. But it was the stra the strangers from opposite side of the planet uh, reaching out saying, how are you real? What What is this? And um, I can't tell you always why I showed up where I did, but I can tell you I knew when I was there. Uh, like uh, one scenario that happened, I came into a room of a, of a young black woman that was crying. Um, she was sitting on a bed in this empty bedroom, and she was upset that she didn't help her boyfriend rearrange his bedroom because a bullet came through the wall and hit him and killed him in his sleep. And I got close to her and I whispered in her ear, had she helped him move the bed to the other side, it would have hit him there because it was his time. And I remember her pulling back and looking around the room like who said that? And and it was, it was just a, it was a as a a comfort aiming situation. She didn't see me. I, I, um, you know who who told me to go there? I can't tell you. I I know that I was pulled because of what was going on with her, and and yeah, it seems to be in a in a dream state that this is occurring. But I don't understand how it can be because. Um, I, I would get just new memories out, out of nowhere, uh, walking, talking, living my day, and and this memory would come to me. And I know on a few different occasions of, like like I was talking about, looking at the scene in space. I I I, I had no idea of me standing still in the living room. I know I was in this other place. Um, absolutely. Uh, I've gone forward in time, backwards in time with those scenarios. And I, I, I don't know what to think of it. Um, uh, the more recent one that I had, like it, it could be something simple as this. I, there was a young um, boy, when I want to say he was eight years old, his, his dad was not living in the house anymore. I think it was a recent divorce or something. And <clears throat> he, uh, he didn't have a bedroom. He had, a, he had like a, a nook, a corner in this large uh, hallway where his bed was and he was scared he's not in a bedroom he's in this hallway and and it's just an open area and there was a staircase in the center and and he was just scared his dad's not home anymore he's got other siblings and he was kind of kind of having a, a hope that there'd be some protection and um i came through and he was with the covers pulled up to his his face and 
looking around and I know he could see me and I, I looked at him and smiled and he, he pulled his blankets down and smiled and he, and he was, uh, at ease and, and I just kind of gave the, uh, I don't know, like an emotion to say, I'm going to check the doors and the windows and make sure everybody's okay. You don't have to worry. And so I went and I, I did that. I know I'm not walking. I know I'm gliding um, and, and checking the windows and the, and everything and came back and like gave him like a, a nod of it's okay. And he, he turned over and went to sleep. So sometimes it's simple like that. Um, and it's, it's, uh, I know I've been doing it. I, 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 I just, you know, it's the weirdest thing to have somebody reach out and I'm like, how'd you find me? And it's like, you told me your name. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, uh, surprised to learn again. It's like, uh, I know there'd be other people like myself, but I haven't found anybody. And then to learn of quote saints, you know, that did this. And I, and just to, it, it, I feel like a whole new world opened up to me and learning this because I didn't feel alone, uh, anymore. And it's like, oh my gosh, there were others. And, uh, but you know, for the most part, from what I could find, uh, they're, they're past crossed over, um, people. And, and I'm so new to understanding this, this, uh, the Catholic faith, um, and, and others that know of such things. I, I feel like I've been in the dark about it. Like, I would always say there's some things that exist without a name or a title and just are. So I just went with that. And to think that there was ancient knowledge uh, around about this. And I, I just, I've been like a dog with a bone trying to work as much as I can to wake people up to what I know to be true that, uh, you know, trying to explain two whole phenom phenomena and get people to be, on guard and aware, uh, it's taken a lot out of me and keeping, keeping focused. I didn't stop to see what was going on. So, um, it's been just, it's been a life changing time. It really has, uh, these past few years that to learn that just three years ago, um, what by location I've asked a million people, you know, like, wow, how did no one tell me this? So, um, yeah, so I don't know if you have any other questions uh, now or later. Feel free to reach out. Thanks. I'll, I'll try education. to be. Uh, no, I, I don't want to hog the mic anymore. But uh, Holly, I'll, I'll try to be in touch with you. I'd like to talk with you more about that sometime. Almost definitely. I I could say you'll probably be the first that I've spoken to about that on a public platform. I, I surely haven't talked about it. Uh, like this. <laughs> um, do we want to do the Larry thing, Fringe? I just I'm worried that we're we're going to lose him. I don't want him to fall asleep. Happens to every uh, every one of us once a week. What's what's um, the timing? I, I just have to point out to the room that on my screen, and I, I think it goes by the number of followers you have. So Larry probably has more followers than you have, Ulrich. So on my screen. I have a Doom sandwich right now. There's me on one side, there's Doomer Daddy on the other side, and Larry is in the middle. And I have screenshotted this for posterity. And yeah, he's pretty much done. That's it. I, mean, I, I love and you. you did, I love you. you. did DM this. I love you, friend. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I, I just wanted to. Speaking of falling asleep, I'm not going to fall asleep now. I'm jittering with caffeine. But I was I, I, I was unable to. What drugs do you have ready for the doom? <laughs> what are you on right now, Larry? Just caffeine? Yeah, just caffeine. Sorry, yeah, I'm sorry. At, and I'm fully awake. So, but I was uh, unable to talk earlier. And matter of fact, I fell asleep uh, during part of the presentation. So I was I only heard like Heidi speaking for about twenty minutes, where she got to. Uh, I got the name of the the entity that they had been talking to, and then I just felt it. it was a beautiful space, and that's why I fell asleep because it was so peaceful to be in here and just hear up an honest person telling an honest story. 
Um, and that's what I get from you, Heidi, is that you're, you're, you're telling the truth. And I will just say this, that this is still very mysterious uh, about the, the battle between good and evil for me, because I'm, I'm not willing to reduce it to simple maliciousness. Um, I, I want to find probe deeper and find what is really going on here. And I have not yet discovered it, but in my own experience, it was indeed accompanied by both negative first and then positive positive interactions. And I, I was I, I can never be sure how much of that negativity was was spawned from my own mind and then amplified seemingly by them. Uh, or was it actually them entirely? I, I just I still feel like it was them. Because it didn't feel like me at all, but then again, I just don't know. Anyway, um, it's so hard to to describe this. But then the contrary was actually felt like Jesus himself. And so I do have to say that I am a Christian, but I'm not a religious man. I, I hope, are you the same way, Heidi? Uh, essentially. Okay, yeah, so... I will also say that in my journey of, of exploration of this topic, I did study the Old Testament uh, and the ancient alien theory in mind while I was doing that, and um, also brought in the Sumerian uh, uh, creation story and considered all of this. And I came up with a cosmology that <clears throat> I think is pertinent to the conversation, so I just want to sketch it out briefly. It is that the, according to the Sumerians, they created us uh, as a slave labor force. I hate to use the word slave, but I mean, a, a labor force. And, and they, you know, that's kind of selfish of them to do. Uh, I think they were aware of a coming cataclysm. And when their work was done, they, they intended to let us perish. But one of the genetic engineers you know, this is the Enlil Enki story. <clears throat> uh, took pity on us and and secretly told Noah how to save us. I mean, that's if that's what the text says. Okay, so um, you know, I quickly jumped from Sumerian to Hebrew there from going, but um, here here's how I see it: is that there was great division among that race, and I don't respect them for having. Uh, created us in the way that they did and then just sort of like being willing to let us perish because we were just like fancy apes to them, uh, you know, supercharged apes. Um, and yet uh, they were much more than that. Um, and I don't know if they ever expected that. But anyway, so once we were saved, um, then we switch over to the Hebrew story of, the, of Noah's flood and being saved there. Um, what we see is that the watchers were set up to sort of evaluate uh, how these humans are turning out, you know, and there was division again. You see the story of Job with the Satan and, and God, <clears throat> two individuals who are, ju you know, judging Job and, and questioning, are these beings worth uh you know, saving. So I, I think it's sombering to look at it this way, that we were not really created as the apple of God's eye, but instead someone's labor force. And, it, you know, but look at what we've become. And I, 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 there's no reason not to feel that humanity is a beautiful project. And, the, you know, what, what we see in the world right now, anyway, let me continue with the story. So I see that I see that our lifespans were limited by this God who, after the flood, decided that he doesn't want us to even live a thousand years. He only wants us to live 120 years. Um, and so, I think there's been some fuckery, as, as Ulrich likes to say. Um, and, <laughs> you know, I, I look at the Old Testament God, and I'm now I'm getting to the meat of it here. The Old Testament God was not a good person. He was assigned a job, Yahweh, and he did it with boisterousness and pettiness and stood by while half of his own people killed the other half just because they didn't claim allegiance to him anymore. Um, 
he killed a bunch of other people throughout the land, and and he acted like a almost like a caricature, almost like the wizard behind the curtain, you know, like trying to be bigger than he really was. So I don't like that either. That's not a good, none of this is, is positive. It's almost like there's, there's a race of beings, the ones who created us, who are still questioning whether we're good. And maybe that's pertinent <gasps> to the situation. So, but as to the demonic part, and I'll land on this because I know I'm getting really lengthy here. Um, I'm still trying to figure out uh, uh, what is, the, is there something like demonic? Is there a group of demonic beings? And what would they be, what would they want? Are they, is it the same thing? Are we talking about the spirits of the Anunnaki? I just don't know. I don't know how to make sense out of that. But Heidi... Um, I'm going to go back and listen to the rest of the story, and I will tell you this. I've made some movement. Um, I listened to a story of a, of, a, of a person that I know very well, and it was eye-opening because what happened to this person was not a positive thing, but I understood why it was done, and it was done in a very rude, clunky, and callous way by another by a non-human intelligence. So I know for a fact... What? I, Hold on. I know for a fact, Stop. yeah. Did, what did I just hear? No. I did, did somebody put LSD inside my phone? Did you just say another non-human entity? Yes. Did something that wasn't... What is happening? I must be hallucinating. Did, you, did Fringe make you co-host? Yes. Who gave me drugs? Yeah. What is happening? <laughs> What is happening? Did you just say those words? Yes. I need a moment. Okay. Give me a okay. moment. Okay, Heidi, just to bring you up to speed, Larry is our favorite love and light uh, guy, and we've now lured him into the Doom Room a couple of times, so getting him up here as a co-host in a Doom sandwich is uh, its just a little ironic. Um, Larry, uh, before Heidi answers, I'm just going to throw this out there again because I have said this to you in the past, and I just want to remind this. you. French. I can't believe what's happening. Can, please continue. I just, I just want to remind Larry that I'll, I'll, although you know his view of the Old Testament could be correct, and I'm not going to say it's not, but I do want to throw out there because Larry has an extreme reverence for Jesus Christ, and I know this, and I know that Larry would love to hear Heidi's story about meeting Jesus, and Larry, that's why we've been waiting for you to come up this whole time. Heidi's been holding off on that story. If you didn't hear that earlier. I just want you, Larry, I just want Larry just to think about it, and you don't have to answer, but I, I want the room to think about it, too. Uh, because you have such reverence for Christ, and I've said this before, Larry, just view the Old Testament as a seed war, and all of the behaviors that you look at Yahweh um, and you don't like, I just want you to look at those behaviors as an actual, this is a cosmic war. And that war was bloodline against bloodline. It was the good side against the negative side. And they were literally wiping each other out at every chance. And if the bloodline of Christ had to be preserved for those uh, years, um, and, that's, and that's why the other side was getting wiped out. And by the way, that other side was very likely a lot of Nephilim, uh, demonic blood bloodlines and so if you could just maybe have a glimpse of it in that way and I'm not asking you to believe that or anything I just want to throw that out to the room as another option because I hear many people who like to chastise Yahweh for what he did in the Old Testament so I'd love to throw that out there in the meanwhile Heidi if you could help uh, Larry out with this question and then maybe go through your experience for him before uh, his caffeine uh, blows his blood pressure up Oh my goodness. Well, <laughs> you guys are hilarious. I love it. Um, well, I, I don't know if there was a, a, a straight question. Um, your position is that God wasn't always a good guy in creating what he did. Uh, is there Was there a specific question that you you wanted to ask? No, no, but there is, I mean, yes, there is one, but I didn't ask it yet. Um, I, I do have one for you, Heidi. What do you define, uh, what is your understanding of evil? And, and I, want, uh, I want you to drill into it. Tell me 
what beings are evil, why are they evil, and what is it that they enjoy about being evil? Do they talk about how evil they've been all day with their spouses and enjoy, like... <laughs> no, just, just this guy really, I honestly... Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I think you get the gist of what is evil in your, in your opinion. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, well, first I'll, I'll say I don't have all the answers. That's for sure. I don't think anybody does. And if they say they do run from them. Um, but uh, my understanding is that it is the absence of light, uh, the absence of hope, the absence of love, um, but full of destruction, full of uh, just greed and uh, seeking to take over, uh, to absorb another's force. Uh, to possess it, to control it, um, you know, doesn't have the best intentions. And, uh, you know, even, even like, uh, the, the mother of Jeffrey Dahmer said he was a great son, you know, so there was some good there, but I'm talking about something that doesn't have that good. It's done. Everything that might appear as being a positive is done to gain favor just to uh, groom you to, to feed into the negativity. I mean, uh, just polar opposite of but light. Was it created that way or? I, I wouldn't know up to a level of creation, uh, from what I was told because I, I can't, it's, it's amazing being on the other side of, of this place and, and, this world and, and having all the answers to everything. And as you come back, it's just like the near death experiencers, it leaves. And I, I but I, I get little tidbits and, and, and whatnot. Um, but I, I don't have access to everything, but to say a, a creation of, I mean, sometimes I, I think we get caught up in the details and miss the bigger picture of what's important right now, because we're dealing with a threat that's after us individually all of us and well, and that's, people, what, that's uh, when we need details, Heidi. We need clarity <laughs> on what we're we're dealing with here. We under, we need to understand their motives and and really what mm -hmm. what is this for? Now, I would like to suggest just a theory. I'm not saying I believe this is absolute truth, but it would seem that we are all, have all lived with a demon in our left ear and an angel in our right ear, and it seems like that's maybe a recipe or it's part of the human psyche and and it produces fruit um by making that free will choice um and I, I i guess that's kind of how i see it like if you choose destruction it's because you're unhappy with everything and you just want to destroy because it's not suiting you're not getting your needs met i don't know but uh continue heidi uh, you know, when I hear of, like, uh, people who destroy purposely uh, so many different things, I'm like, why would somebody shoot themselves in their own foot? It makes no sense, because they live here, too. You know, it, it just, I, I don't get it. And uh, I'd ask the question uh, to the, the being that I had uh, contact with, and they said, well, they wouldn't. They're absolutely influenced. They're absolutely uh, controlled that the, the person that starts the riot in a crowd is influenced. They essentially listen to uh, the pull of the, the devil on your other shoulder uh, telling you take a left instead of a right, throw a rock instead of your fist in the air, you know, and, and, it, and it's like, my goodness, you know, it's just such an old fashioned way of looking at it. But it's like, man, these stereotypical conversations have stuck around for centuries for a reason uh, this whole scenario of there being a hell uh, that's so ridiculous but then time and time again people will tell you they've been there i've seen it i didn't know what i was looking at i didn't know what i was dealing with um uh, i was doing a, a i was a guest on a on a show oh my gosh this gives me chills because over the years i've had more and more people tell me this i i was i was talking about people going to bed at night and 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 waking up in a, a tiny cell in hell this is their this is how they spend their evenings when they're dreaming they're stuck in a cage 
and I'm, I'm, I'm talking on a show, and during the commercial break, the, the host of a very popular show goes, I'm shaking right now. I haven't told anybody this, but every time I go to bed at night, I am naked. I am strapped, hanging from chains over an open flame, and that's where I'm at every night. What the heck are we talking about here? It's terrifying. Like, what is this? What's going on? Why are these rumors of such a thing existing? And then people secretly talking about, I am in hell. You know, that book, 23 Minutes in Hell, people are in these places. I, I, I met a friend of a friend who was being shoved my way. Talked to her about it. Talked to her about it. And she's like, every time I close my eyes, I see these teeth, these eyes, these faces, these demonic faces screaming, chanting at me. I see that 100% of the time. So what do you, what do you do? What do you do with that? So um, there's a lot of darkness that people are dealing with privately, secretly. Um, and, and it's like, it's not getting addressed fully. We're not going to get all the answers, but uh, the rumors are true apparently. And uh, these are people that aren't religious, aren't into these things. And, they're, they're experiencing it. it. How? How is this possible? Um, I don't know. I mean, it, there's there's a lot to say about the whole thing, but um, what is darkness? What is evil? It's a driving force, and, and it's not uh, not foreign to other, other species. I mean, chimpanzees murder other monkeys, you know, chimpanzees. I mean, my gosh, it looks evil to us, but for them, it's just... Uh, you know, matter of sur surviving, but um, perspective can be everything at once too. But I, I think I that would, um, I would even disagree a little bit with that, Heidi. I would think there's evil in chimpanzees that is beyond well, just survival. There's there yeah, there's it's, it's there's a clear enjoyment in some cases of of sadistic enjoyment of the of watching the suffering of of another yeah. chimpanzee. Do you know yes. what I mean? There's there's clearly evil in in other species as well. Yes, yes, I, I have heard that, that, wow, they murdered some, another chimp. I saw this documentary, I was like, what the hell? So I guess it's not isolated uh, to just us being that way. And it's also not isolated for non-human entities, uh, interdimensional beings, or alien beings, as all being docile and positive. They're just like us. There's some that are horrific. And they've got the ability to do things with technology that can really uh, flip our, our bodies inside out and grab our souls it's it's crazy what's what's happening but it is happening but again look at our power look at our potential look at all the tools we have that it takes an army of them to take one of us down and pin us down to the bed and then say got you now um you know ooh, you know boy big big man that you got me pinned with your your whole crew <laughs> you know so they've got a big job to try to take us down and uh you know, and, and then we've got Christ on our side. <laughs> so they're, they're really kind of having a difficult time. And, and we've also got help from more positive beings. Just like, you know, we see uh, one of our comrades getting beat down a, a across the, the planet. And we send money to, to help them out to get out of their, their, their situation. You know, we, we give support. And that's what other beings are doing. They're giving support. But we're not in there, uh, they're not in there uh, swinging the axe trying to fight these things off necessarily for us either. They're trying to equip us, train us to recognize what's going on and stand up for ourselves.